You know, one thing that I really enjoy about printing with ABS is once you let them cool, they remove themselves from the print bed. Right at the top of this video, we need to start with the safety first announcement because we are going to be working in this video with a couple of materials that are slightly more dangerous than the ones we worked with in the previous video. So remember, ABS, the material that we're printing with, is a little bit more stinky when it's 3D printing than other materials like PLA or PolySmooth. So be sure to only use it in a well-ventilated area. And acetone that we are going to be using to smooth the ABS with is extremely flammable and toxic. So make sure that you are using it in a well-ventilated area. That means think about space and think about airflow. Okay, good. Now that we got that out of the way, let's talk about smoothing prints with ABS. In the previous video, I talked about the challenge of making 3D prints for people who maybe aren't used to 3D prints to make them have that look and feel that people would expect from a product. And in my previous attempt, I used a material called PolySmooth from Polymaker. It smoothed out extremely well and it is extremely easy to work with. However, as I was working with it, a member of my Discord jumped out and said, why not ABS? ABS smooths just as well. And I realized I had a blind spot and I should have thought of this first. Now, in my defense, the reason why I didn't think of it first is because well, I don't really use ABS very much. Even though when I first started 3D printing over a decade ago, ABS was all we used. And in fact, I still have a lot of spools of ABS just sitting around that I just, that I just don't use. And I stopped using it because, well, first of all, PLA was much easier to print with. It was very easy to get successful prints with PLA and plus, except in extreme cases, most of the time PLA works well enough. That and the fact that with big prints, especially big prints with thin walls, it, it was very difficult to get a successful print because of the thermal contraction of ABS. See, ABS wasn't necessarily made for 3D printing. ABS was made for injection molding. So it was designed to shrink dramatically and quickly when it was exposed to cool air. That's a good thing when you're making 10,000 Legos in a day, but that's a less good thing when you're trying to 3D print something that's taking possibly hours, maybe a day to do, and you're only really heating the very bottom of your print area from your print bed because some other company holds the patent on heating the entire build chamber. However, I failed to think that if I'm just making really small figurines, those are well within the heating area of the build plate, and I really don't need to worry about that thermal shrink. Plus, these are fairly solid models. There aren't a whole lot of thin details, uh, maybe some, but not enough that I really need to worry about shrinkage on the ABS, so really, these would be perfect for ABS. But we still have the same question that we had with PolySmooth. That is, if we take a multicolor print, which is something that we weren't doing back in the day, and try to smooth it, will the colors bleed or blend together? Will it melt together? Or will those colors stay separated and crisp? And what will the final product look like? Well, it's time to science it. And once again, big thanks to my friends at Polymaker for supplying the ABS for these experiments. Now, I want to be honest here. I actually approached Polymaker about doing this and they were willing to do it. So thank you very much, Polymaker. But the truth is I was already using Polymaker ABS and PolySmooth that I had bought myself because I really do like Polymaker's products. They're not paying me to say this besides providing the filament, but the truth is, these guys are filament alchemists, and I absolutely love their product. So I am proud that they provided the material for these experiments. Thank you again, Polymaker. There are a couple of different techniques that you can use. The one that I like to use is to get one of these little fry pots that you can get at a department store. They come with a little basket for 
you to put your food in, but we're not ever going to use this one for food because instead of food, we are going to put just a couple of tablespoons of acetone in the bottom of the pot. It really doesn't take very much, just a little bit to cover the bottom. Then put the prints that you want to smooth in the basket. Now I've had this basket for a long time and the bottom is starting to get a little warpy. Plus after looking at the way spikes worked on the bottom of the polisher, I thought maybe I could make something similar for this. So I took a model, I made it big enough to fit inside the bottom here and it's just a bunch of spikes for all the prints to rest on. That way the acetone vapor can get underneath these as well and smooth them all the way around. Then you take the basket and you put it very carefully into your fryer. Now acetone already wants to be a vapor even at room temperature but we're going to help it along just a little bit. So let's lid this and turn this pot onto its lowest setting, onto warm. And you will hear the acetone inside here immediately boiling, vaporizing, and turning to a gas. And you want to watch the process as it's happening because it's not gonna take more than a minute. In fact, it's so fast with acetone, which is a big difference compared to the poly smooth, which can take 15 to 30 minutes. Here it goes, it's already boiling. After just a few seconds, all of that acetone is going to be boiled into a vapor and you will be able to turn off the heat. So it really doesn't need to be on very long at all. And then I just watch this because like I said, it doesn't take more than a minute. And when I see the very tops of these little prints turn into a smooth kind of glossy finish, I know that it's done. We're there already. Acetone is just so fast, so aggressive in the way that it works. Then be careful not to breathe in the fumes because it is acetone gas in there and carefully, carefully remove your prints from the basket. Now, while we're waiting for those to cool though, I want you to turn your attention to the pot. This pot is now full of acetone vapor and acetone vapor is heavier than air. So it's just sitting in the pot here and what you can do to get rid of it is you could blow into it and blow it into the air and breathe it in, which is not good. I said that this was heavier than air, right? All you have to do is just kind of dump it out like you would any other fluid. And if you are in a well-ventilated area or at least a large space where that can go down and dissipate out, you'll be just fine. All right, these have had a minute to cool down and solidify up. And so let's take a look at our smooth prints. Maybe put one of them next to one of our unsmooth prints. Isn't that beautiful? Just like poly smooth, acetone smoothing gets rid of layer lines and gives it a look and feel that just looks and feels like a product. Because I used the spike bottom on there to make sure that they can get smoothed on all sides, there are a couple of spiky scars on the bottom of these prints. You know what though? I'm just gonna call that the 3D printing version of flushing. Just those tiny artifacts that appear from every manufacturing process. And quite frankly, they don't look that bad. So I'm gonna leave them and not worry about them. But if you were worried about them, it wouldn't be too hard to pour a little bit of acetone in a rag or a, a hard paper towel and then wipe them to smooth them out and go for it. But I'm not going to bother with that extra step. This looks just fine to me. In fact, these look fantastic. So at this point, I wanted to have kind of a head to head comparison, poly smooth versus ABS, which one's better. But in order to compare apples to apples, I really needed to reprint a model that I had printed in PolySmooth in ABS. So I reprinted the Yog sagoth which has the black and white right next to each other, and wanted to compare the results of these two. And it was actually super interesting. The smoothing on these two models is extremely comparable. If anything, the ABS for being smooth so quickly is actually more aggressively smooth, I think, than the polish smooth is. But overall, the colors don't bleed. They look great smoothed out. However, ABS has a couple of other advantages over polish smooth. For one, it's cheaper. It's about the same price as regular spools of PLA and you get it by the kilogram. Also, you get it in more colors. Heck, Polymaker has more colors of ABS 
than they do of polish smooth, but you can get ABS in a wide variety of colors. We have been making ABS for a very long time. And so, yeah, you can get it in just a rainbow array of colors, more than just about anything except for maybe PLA these days. Now, here's one thing that I didn't expect. Polish smooth and ABS feel different. I can tell just by touch which one's which. The polish smooth, when you give it a good squeeze, it feels like it's it's giving underneath your finger. And it's really not. I mean, I'm not like flattening it out. It's not like clay or anything like that. I almost feel like it's my hand that's giving. Whereas the ABS, you know, if you've ever stepped on a Lego, you know the power of ABS. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't give. It just feels solid. It feels like you expect a thing to feel. Now that's not a knock against Polish Smooth. It's just different in that way, but I did think it was interesting. So in the end, ABS is cheaper. It's easier to use. It smooths much faster and it's got a wider array of colors. Does Polish Smooth have any leg to stand on at this point? Well, yeah, actually. I said at the beginning of this that I had kind of forgotten about ABS. I had stopped using it for a while. And the reason for that is because ABS is harder to print with. It requires higher temperatures. It really works better with an enclosure, a fully closed in 3D printer. And if you have a 3D printer that can't print hot enough to print in ABS, then it might not even be an option for you. For example, the Bamboo Labs A1 Mini doesn't print ABS. So if I want to continue to use the A1 Mini to produce minis for this, I'm gonna have to use PolySmooth to do it. But whether it's PolySmooth or ABS, the models for the Kickstarter that I'm currently running, Cthulhu and Friends, are all definitely going to be smoothed out so that they look as professional as possible. And I'm looking forward to that. Well, that's it for this video. I want to thank you very much for watching. And I want to remind you that you are a child of God. So you're special to me. So take care of yourself. And if you can, someone else too. I'll see you next time.